So here's the experiment that I'm doing, the five days of happiness. Um, the Finnish, um, I think is the, yeah, visitfinland.com, so it is obviously the government, is um, giving a masterclass on happiness because, as we know, the Finns are actually the happiest people on the planet. And I'm so curious to see whether this works with a normal lifestyle where you have children, commitments, work, etc. So I'm going to try it with one, well, hopefully every day, one session a day, it's five sessions all together. And I'm going to discover it with you because I, I only saw the first one. So, and the first one is about going into nature. So what I'm going to do is to follow the... Um, uh, the checklist that is in here, which is going to nature, listen to the sounds of nature, and I'll I'll post up what this is uh, on screen, and uh, and see how it goes. And I'm only gonna give myself half an hour because then I got meetings. Uh, but see whether this integration with nature and you know the lessons from the fin for from the fins actually work with normal, let's say, city lifestyle as well. And I'll see you back here. making myself a chai latte to go with it and uh, because I'm gonna abandon my phone for a minute and uh, well for the time that I'm in nature um, but in the meantime I can uh, I can have a drink right December, so not uh, a month where I have this habit of going out every day for a walk but the Finns said you have to spend time in nature appreciate nature think about what interests you in the surroundings that you have and uh, and also how it can serve you now and in the future which is fantastic it's about gratitude it's about spending time in nature absorbing and being part of it um so i am very close to home um i'm gonna switch off my mobile phone because that's the whole point being completely disconnected from uh, the usual you know technology and stuff and i'm gonna uh, go into a little forest that there is uh, here just walk around the field go to the forest appreciate it for a while and then we'll report back cheers half an hour outside in the little forest um it was pretty good it was pretty good the thing where i live is that is um is not city but there were there were lots of noises from the roads and planes passing by and trains <laughs> you could actually hear them quite well so that's not um I think it's taking one dimension away from what potentially could have been. However, having said that, my takeaway from this first day of happiness training, if you like, is that 
that half an hour was quite refreshing and um, compared to staying indoors having my lunch sitting down and scrolling on social media uh, or catching up with work that was definitely a welcome change that it's quite cold today but bearable and it's actually invigorating so the takeaways from my observation of nature were also quite insightful although my mind kept on going back to my things <laughs> i try to focus on nature what is giving me what i'm noticing etc and that was quite good i noticed for example everything is changing at the moment of course it's autumn but then everything changes all the time and nature just accepts it and i love that and it lets it go and it just it is what it is and it's still very colorful you know um i've noticed lots and lots of different shades of brown and green and orange and yellow and it was so pretty it was really beautiful and also nature is never really still um it moves very slowly though and i love that for about five minutes i just stand still in a point and just observed and it was amazing just seeing the leaves um trembling just a bit fluctuating in the air and uh, a few birds passing by all very calm very i wouldn't say deliberate but, but it looked like <laughs> it was deliberate and then i loved how a puzzle it all looks but somehow it's so beautiful um even if it's not perfect let's call it this way so lots and lots and lots of lessons learned in a way lots of observations uh, that i want to take back to my life and uh, you know how much enjoyment does something like this give me and um, of course the oxygen and the prettiness of it, of it all and the green which calms my mind yeah, I wish just the sounds were a bit more nature-like because I don't know whether you can hear it, but there is a plane passing by which detracts a little bit from the experience. But you know what? That's the whole experiment to just use what you got on your doorstep and that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, today day two of the masterclass on happiness. I'm running late. Uh, I've been working the whole morning. I have a session to deliver in an hour, but I want to stop by a place, um, like a natural place, where I can put in into fruition what I learned from day two of the Finnish Masterclass on Happiness, which is all about focusing on your senses on nature. Slightly different from what I did yesterday. Uh, it's more about mindfulness, I can see that. Um, yeah, and just enjoy a moment of calm. Hopefully I can do it because I'm running a bit late. But even if it's like those 15, 20 minutes, so that's the whole point of this challenge is demonstrating that it is possible to integrate it and how I feel at the end of it. Um, and today is a lovely day. There is a sunshine, as you can see, shining. Um, so yeah, see you later. I decided to ditch the little forest near where I live also because it's nice to explore and that was that was another one of the suggestions from the second day video which is explore you know be brave uh, not that I ought to be honest this is not the wilderness that you can find in Lapland but I mean it's a lovely little park well it's actually quite big um, that is not so far from where I live but it does require you to have a car to to come here. Um, so because it's on the way uh, to the place where I need to go and deliver the workshop in about an hour, maybe less, I am going to 
to stop here. I love the imperfection of nature, it's just beautiful, it makes me feel better about my own imperfections. This is gorgeous. So I set up for this little corner, which I think is lovely. Um, it's not exactly in the middle of nature, but I have to <laughs> economize the time. And the idea is I'm gonna stand here for a few minutes, just put the phone away and um, concentrate on my breath and on the feeling and the sensation from the sounds and the smells and the touch uh, so that I really feel nature. So that's what I'm gonna do for a few minutes. I made it into a sort of five minutes mindfulness session and it was incredible because I, did, I mean I didn't want to stop but I have to go to my appointment my my session um, but the thing I noticed the most is the smell I, yesterday it was raining the whole day so all the soil is is wet and the smell is divine the smell of wet wood it's just beautiful and that really calmed me down I'm probably you can see from me I feel a bit doped <laughs> and the sun on my face even though it's not warm because it's actually cold but you know the gentle breeze and the light on my eyes which were closed I enjoyed it so much it was only five minutes and I wonder what happens if you know you make it a longer session um, honestly I feel like I took a tranquilizer or something um, just beautiful and then you know there's noise yes there is some noise from the road but it's less than where I live and um, I mostly could hear the birds and the rustling of leaves which is lovely as well but the smell oh my god so divine anyway I must go now um, so day two experiment done right so I wanted to record my impressions um, right at the end of my session here uh, a university local to me um, I felt so confident I, I delivered a presentation to a group of businesses about sustainability and I felt super confident super calm really focused and I don't know it might be it might be coincidence but I think that little you know a few minutes in nature just breathing and absorbing and being happy um i think that they, they really made a difference so yeah so far so good hello so for the third day of this challenge i have to reflect upon trust and um which is interesting, I wasn't expecting that, but then it makes perfect sense. This is about trusting others, but I think most important is trusting yourself that you can go through life in a way that makes sense and that you can uh, overcome your challenges. So it's having that hope but and that trust in yourself and in others that if you need or, you know, if you fall, somebody will be there to catch you but you also likewise can catch others and help um so what I, because i'm this is my son's swimming pool so we are um i'm just outside waiting for him to finish his lesson i will go upstairs in general about trust but also so they're talking about flux and trust and um balancing all of this with nature and trying to get your you know recharge your batteries basically and feel like nature supports you as well as others can support you um so i'm a bit confused all, all in all at the moment 
but I'm going to journal about it. So there are some questions and prompts on the, uh, you know, masterclass on happiness um, on the Finnish website. So I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm outside just to breathe a little bit because I think that helps really connecting with nature, even though, you know, it's just a few shrubs here. I mean, there is a park there, but I haven't got time to go there. Again, keeping it real. Um, and then I'm going to journal and I will report back. <laughs> So I didn't have a minute today to record the rest and my feedback on the um, journaling exercise about trust um, because it's Saturday, lots of activities with the kids and, you know, and then cooking and stuff for the usual stuff from, a, you know, for a family. Um, in terms of trust, I realised I'm actually quite lucky because I never had any episodes in my life where I completely lost trust in people um yes of course there's some stuff for some uh, elements or you know um times when I got disillusioned or you know taken advantage advantage of but nothing so serious that it made me lose trust in myself and in people in general and I think since this seems to be a key, and I understand why, is a key element of happiness. Because you know that you can trust others, you know you can trust yourself to overcome challenges, or you can trust others to support you if you have challenges. If you don't have that, it's very hard. So I'm lucky. And I don't think this is something you can overcome just like that, if you don't have it. Um, it might be traumas that lead you to that loss of trust um which probably you need to do therapy for etc so I'm, I'm just lucky which means i'm happy but i'm also lucky um so that was my conclusion surely nature i mean something also that came out from the reflection today is that nature can help support can give infinite lessons of resilience and uh, forever change and be okay with that and I think that is something that everybody can embrace but in terms of trust um, it's a bit of a lottery that's my reflection um, yeah so let's see what tomorrow brings as you can see I'm in my pajamas I'm in bed <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow for the next um, challenge New week, new day. I um, haven't done my challenge yesterday, it was Sunday. Just too many family related things. We were also near Christmas, so a few presents to buy, stuff like that. Um, but I did have a look at what day three of the Masterclass on Happiness in place, and I loved it and I can't wait to do it because it's about crafting, it's about using your hands. Um, maybe using some natural materials to make your own things uh, or to repair your clothes. In fact, the suggestion there is to repair something, um, maybe a jumper or a rug or decorate it in some ways or repair it so that you give it a new lease of life. Um, so good job, I didn't have to do it yesterday, or I decided not to do it yesterday because I need to gather some materials and think about what I want to do. I mean, I do crafting anyway, quite a lot. Um, I draw all the time, for example, and I tend to make, and I yesterday actually baked some mince pies from scratch. Well, the mince was bought, but anyway, the pastry was made from scratch. Um, you know, the, I always make something which makes me think maybe that contributes to my happiness um definitely does actually because i don't know so there is basically a combination of the crafting element and the sustainability of it 
when we reuse something, we make something using um, pre-loved materials or natural materials. So, so that's the suggestion. So today I'm going to see what I can do. I have a couple of ideas um, and I will report back. In the meantime, I'm keeping up the nature contact element, which honestly, yesterday I didn't do it and I didn't feel so great. Today I did, well, I'm doing it. And uh, two days before I did as well. And I can see the difference, can absolutely see the difference compared to when I don't have a walk or spend some time in nature. So I'm gonna redo the step one and step two and, uh, and then go to work. So, see you later. been really excited um, to do the tra this transformation, this crafting activity. I've chosen um, a jumper that has a big holes at the front and I'll try and do something um, creative with it. Um, so I'm going to show you. So this was a really pretty jumper that I got um, second hand at a market. Uh, so it was already, say, a sustainable choice to start with. But now, unfortunately, I think moths had the best of it. So um, there's a big hole here, a smaller hole here. I think I'm going to repair this with needle and thread. And then I'm going to do something a bit creative here using some scraps of uh fabric that i had because i used to sew you see <laughs> i used to sew so i have like a piece of woolen jumper piece of jeans and some you know flowery fabric we'll see what i can come up with <music> So there you go. <laughs> this is the product of my labor tonight. And this is the um, jumper repurposed. I had a lot of fun. So for me anyway, crafting is amazing. I love it. So this was just right up my street and it really made me happy. I do feel happier and I feel like I've done something meaningful. And uh, you know, arguably, <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit more fun than you used to be. So there you go, win-win. I am going to buy ingredients for a typical Sicilian um, dish, I would say, or snack. I mean, it's quite a heavy snack because it's arancine. As you probably know, a uh, very typical food Today's a special day, today is the 13th of December and uh, this is typical of our uh, tradition to um, make arancine on this day in honor of St. Lucy, Santa Lucia. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this and I'm telling you is because um, the last class of the Masterclass on Happiness uh, from the Finns is about food and I thought I'm not really familiar with the Finnish food and on the website they have some lovely recipes. I even bought the ingredients to make them. But then decided otherwise. I decided to do something of my own tradition that brings me happiness. And it's something that you don't do every day. You don't make arancine from scratch every day. So I thought that this would be a fantastic opportunity uh, to do both. To make food that make me happy and uh, and that is unusual to make from scratch uh, on a normal school day because actually today is a Wednesday. Um, so I will let you know how that goes later. Um, and this, you know, that will be the last, the last uh, lesson 
from the masterclass and I agree with that food is incredible so um, making things with your hands like the crafting that you know the, of, of the last session and um, and making food is is great it makes you happy um, and eating food that makes you happy uh, sharing it with others as well it's amazing Right, I finished. <laughs> I've done all the five um, master classes of this very fun, very lovely, really, course on happiness. Um, uh, but that's meant to be um, making me find my inner fin. And I am pleased to report that I feel really happy. <laughs> I don't know whether it's, you know, time of the year, particularly you know, Christmas, um, but I think I learned something doing this. And I especially learned, I realised the first couple of sessions that were all about nature and our relationship with nature, because I can see a real difference. And when I do take the time to spend outside, um, just walking, breathing, I love that. In terms of the other things, uh, absolutely trusting myself, trusting others is important, is fundamental, it comes quite natural to me. Um, but as I explained, it might not be the same for everybody. Um, and then the other two, crafting, I do anyway quite a bit, but that, you know, was a lovely exercise. Stimulating my creativity quite a bit, I decided to actually pick up an old project that I literally started years ago. Um, it's going to be a present for my children and I'm very excited about that. And then I cooked tonight arancina, which is definitely comfort food. You, you will have seen, you know, the deep fry. <laughs> and, uh, and it's enjoyable and it's lovely and, and indulgent and it's okay. So fantastic run, really. Um, I feel happier. We'll see whether I can manage to keep this going for for a while, and especially you know going outside and keep on creating stuff. Okay, um, I realised that when I recorded that video yesterday, uh, the final video is that actually I forgot to reflect upon one element of that puts together all these activities that are meant to be making you happy and apparently the things are quite good at that. And I think the, the key denominator, if you like, among all these activities is really being intentional. And you would expect that. You would expect that, you know, a fast-paced world that is dominated by social media, fast interactions, superficial interactions, and shallowness, really, or content, or what we consume every day, um, it's, it's not conducive to happiness. Um, there is lots of studies around that. It's, in particular, if you want to uh, learn more uh, about all of this, I would suggest that you follow Carl Newport, uh, an American author uh, who's wrote, written a lot of books about it, and my favourite, Deep Work. Um, and he studied this and researched this because he's also a researcher. So he knows how to do these things. Um, they research a lot about this. So I would say intent, being intentional, slow down. Because, you know, crafting and walking and cooking are all activities that you can couple up very quickly. Unless, of course, you're doing a race of some sort in any of these activities. But mainly the idea is to slow down, enjoy what you're doing put your intention and your mind into it to make it count. You know, every walk outside, every crafting activity, every conversation you have, every act of trust towards another person, towards yourself, is all intentional and it's, all, and it's mostly slow. So I would say that is probably the main takeaway now that I'm awake and it's morning. 
actually reflected a bit more about it and uh, I love it and I hope I can take it with me into the new year uh, and in every day really because you know every day is a new choice every day is a new opportunity to do better than the day before so saying that this is it um, and uh, thank you let me know in the comments what you think about this so whether you have experienced it um, if there is something missing here that the Finns haven't really considered that it should be part of the formula for happiness. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.